Hey guys, on my uh, workbench tonight is an old, this is actually one of my old cameras. This is one of my, I think this was the first handy cam that I ever owned. I, I did have other cameras. Prior to this I had, I've, I've showed you my, my two piece uh, uh, beta pack. And uh, I had other um, equipment, professional equipment. This is one of the first handy cams that I owned. Uh, I did have another one. I've still got it. I've got a standard 8mm camera. I'll pull that out at another date uh, if I can find it. It's an on the shoulder type. This was the first high 8 handy cam that I ever owned. And uh, it served me well for many years. But um, it hasn't been turned on in a long time. And I turn it on now, and this is what I get on the picture. Not a very good, not a very good picture. Now I'm not holding out much hope that we're going to be able to uh, do anything to this camera. I, I already kind of know. Oh, look! Look at the uh, even the even the viewfinder is not working. If we zoom it in here. We've lost our horizontal deflection. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. We just have a line up and down on the little CRT. So there's a couple problems with this this camera. I'm not I'm not holding my breath that we're going to be able to do anything at all to fix this camera, and I'm not going to spend any money on it. But I, what I am going to do is I'm going to tear it down so that you can see what what went on in these little small. These were small eight millimeter. These were the smallest of the eight millimeter cameras that uh, Sony produced. This used a, a compact mechanism and a subcompact head drum where the tape was actually wrapped almost 360 degrees as opposed to the normal 8mm the, the head drum was actually wrapped uh, more than 180 degrees. Your conventional um, VHS and beta the head drum was wrapped um, 180 degrees there was two heads but when it came to the 8mm, they actually uh, went an extra 30 degrees. So the head was wrapped 210 degrees. The first 180 degrees was for the standard uh, AFM audio and the video track. The remaining 30 degrees of wrap was used for the optional time code information and PCM uh, digital audio. Now on these particular ones, to make the camera smaller, they actually went to a smaller head drum. And I don't know that you're able to see it in here. But the head drum was actually much smaller than on a conventional 8mm uh, camera or player and the tape was actually wrapped 360 degrees and they used four heads because to keep the angle correct you couldn't do it with two you needed four heads so we're going to disassemble the unit here I'm sure what the problem is going to be on this unit is failed surface mount electrolytic capacitors and I'm sure that they're probably all leaking on to the circuit boards. It was a pretty common problem for video cameras of this era. And part of the problem was when these cameras were new, There was a lot of counterfeit, poor quality components on the market. And as the story goes, and I think I may have told you the story before, there was severe competition between the component manufacturers around the world, in Japan and in Asia. And a lot of these components 
the chemical composition is a trade secret between the manufacturers. Nobody wants to let anybody else know what their recipe is because they want to uh, corner the market and have everyone buy their capacitors or transistors or whatever from them. They don't want the competition building them. It's the same as Intel. They don't want AMD knowing their architecture for their chips. But what happened in the 80s and into the 90s, especially when it comes to these surface mount aluminum capacitors, aluminum electrolytic capacitors, is the chemistry was stolen. Competition started producing these little surface mounted electrolytics here, these SMEs. But they didn't get the chemistry quite right for the electrolytic. And the electrolytic changed its pH when the power was removed. When they had power to them, they were rather neutral. But when they were discharged, they became slightly caustic. And what happened when the solution in them became slightly caustic is it it actually attacked the rubber plug the rubber rubber base that the leads go through and eventually caused the electrolytic to spill out onto the circuit board and once that happened the now slightly based solution would attack the copper and ruin the board It was a very common problem that affected a lot of camcorders made by Sony and Canon. They were affected more than anybody else. Probably because the supplier of the capacitors was the same for both of them. Anyway, this little camera doesn't really owe me anything. I've had it since it was new. When was it made? 1992 is when this thing was born. I've had it for 22 years. So it, uh, it certainly doesn't owe me anything. It would just be kind of neat if I can make it work. Even if I could just make it play back a tape. I've already tried to play a tape and I got exactly the same type of picture when I Put a tape in it so I know that the the problem is common to playback and a live camera signal so what that is telling me is that in one of the common circuits that's that's common to the video output probably where the problem is. I'm just looking, oh, there's going to be one more screw, and there it is up here on the chassis. It's been so darn long since I've taken these apart. This is actually what I used to do. I used to repair these cameras. That was my uh, that was my job in addition to televisions was, was handy cams. And so I, I had lots of experience taking these things apart, but I haven't taken them apart in quite a few years, and I kind of forget what has to come out on this thing. There's probably one more screw in here somewhere that I... Oh, yeah, there is. There's one more screw that I missed. The chassis should just pull right apart on this thing when I get all the screws out. It should just slide right apart. Like that. Okay. Finder, you see how how really integrated these cameras were. There's some little kit natures I got to unplug here. There we go. Okay, so here's the here's the camera itself.
And the problem is going to be one of these filter capacitors more than likely is, is going bad. See if I can spot it just by visually checking it. Sometimes you can see the electrolytic leaking onto the board. Other times not. So here's our layout. This is the camera section. This circuit board here and the board back here, this comprises of the CCB image imager. Here's the lens assembly, and here's all the signal processing for the camera. And then the signal from here gets passed onto the video board. The video board does all the processing. And I, I'm thinking that the, the problem is probably going to be on this board here because it affects playback and it affects uh, live signal from the camera. So more than likely it's going to be one of these these filters. This this rubbing cable here, this is the output plug here that goes to the output connectors. Give me that little cap there that's gone bad. There's some more on this other board, but I if I'm not mistaken, this is the, this is the AU this is the AU 101. So this board on the front here is sound. This one here is the AV board. RF block. Now what we need to do is power the camera up with the camera in pieces. So to do that I need to um, connect the power supply. We'll connect the monitor up to it first of all. And connect the power supply here it should turn on and it did and the picture's crappy we'll just get some of our our fancy cold spray and just kinda hit the circuit here see if anything changes I'm just kind of trying to localize and see whether I can cause a temperature shift that will make the picture change in one way or another. Because usually bad filters are affected by temperature, either by heating or cooling. This one is the this is the power supply here and in theory that could be the problem too is it could be it could be uh, incorrect voltage coming out of the DC to DC converter which is in this can here this is the DC to DC converter I saw no difference when I kind of sprayed down the board here I'm just gonna pop these connectors off here I want to look underneath this board. I have a feeling that the capacitors are all underneath here on this one. This is a CCD TR81 and these ones here didn't have a lot of problems. The, the, the older ones, the, 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 uh, the TR5 had an awful lot of capacitor problems on it. This one didn't have nearly as many caps on it as some of the other cameras had. So I just want to pull out the board here and just take a look underneath. Well, 
that screw wasn't even tight. I just want to pull out this board and just take a look on the bottom side to make sure that we're not uh, overlooking caps that might be mounted on the other side of this board. Definitely a little bit of leakage on a couple of these ones. But these are, on the, this is the sound board, so this one shouldn't affect the video. It should only affect the sound. One of the nice things Sony did is they made the cameras relatively easy to tear down, unlike some cameras made by other camera manufacturers such as Canon uh, their uh, camera designs were not nearly as easy to take apart as a Sony's Sony really kind of set the bar for the the Handycam cameras as far as uh, ease of serviceability Everything all plugs in. You just undo your plugs. This is the switchboard that's coming off now. And as you can see, all the switches are all in one, are all in one um, little assembly. I'm going to undo the power supply here. And if I undo this connector, get this connector out of the way that connects to the camera board. This other little board here should just flip down. I'm going to take this little bracket out of the way here. Let's uh, remove this little bracket. This little circuit board here should flip down, which it has. Now we have access to the bottom of the chassis. So you get a capstan motor here. The drum is on the top. These are the wires going to the drum motor. And as you can see, there is no electrolytic capacitors on this board, which is why what I remember them being. Uh, there are electrolytic capacitors inside this module, the DD33. And I bet if we were to pop the top off this thing, we're going to heat the soldering iron to do that. We'll find we'll probably got some bad ones in here. So here's the inside of this DC to DC um, converter. And unlike the DC to DC converters on a lot of the other models of camera that Sony made, this one they actually used through hole capacitors. Probably because some of the earlier ones, they had such a failure rate. Unfortunately, these ones that they've used are Sanyo little electrolytics and these little Sanyo aluminum electrolytic through holes still weren't very bloody good. So I guess the, 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 the good thing about this is that I'm able to test these with the ESR meter. We can look and see if they're bad and they're a little easier to change than in a surface mounted electrolytic. Um, that like these type these ones are ridiculous to change those we used to do it we used to take a pair of nippers and cut them cut the can off and then pull the leads and solder new ones down it's not impossible to change them but uh, they were they were difficult to change and some of the cameras had upwards of a hundred of these things that had to be changed in them but uh, we're going to check out these ones here in this switching power supply with the DC to DC converter. This is what generates. It takes the 6 volts from the battery and it generates 5 volts and 12 volts and all the other different power supplies that the different various circuits need. Being analog circuits, they typically run on multiple uh, voltages. So we're going to take the ESR meter and just measure some of these and see how they look. So as I go about measuring these uh, electrolytics, they're all looking okay so far. I haven't found any that are really in rough shape. 0.2. This one here is... Oh, wait a minute. I spoke too soon. That one's open. That one... Oh, no, it's not. I just, I just didn't break through the conformal coating. 0.8. And it's a... 33 microfarad at 10 volt 
uh, 33 mi it should be no worse than uh, should be between 5.4 and 2.2 .2, and this was a 0 0.8 so this one's actually okay too the, uh, they're looking okay all the ones in here that I've tested are are looking okay. There's a conformal coating that's sprayed on the board. That's to give it some moisture protection. So I have to kind of press the uh, the probes on a little more firm to break through that conformal coating so that I can uh, measure the ESR. But all the capacitors that I've measured so far, they're all looking okay. Let's take a look at this one big one here. This, uh, this is a 220 at 4 volts. A 220 at 10 volts should be no worse than 0.6. So let's just see how this one fares. Looking at the ESR meter now, I've got one probe on one side of this capacitor which I can make contact with and the other side is right down here. And it's measuring 1.7 ohms. This is a 220 microfarad cap at 4 volts. A 10 volt should be no worse than 0.6. And this one's measuring 1.7. Just double checking my, my probe is a meter is zeroed out, which it is. So this capacitor here is no good. It's 220 at 4 volts. I, I, I think I can probably change that and put a conventional one in. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room though. That's the thing. It's just the height. But that's going to be the one that's causing our video problem. That one right there. Because this is in the video circuit right here to this connector that's where the video output uh, connectors plug right into here that's going to be the one that's causing us our problem I'm going to see if I can find a suitable capacitor that I can replace there and see if I can find one that's going to be uh, low enough profile to fit in there and still get the thing back together Okay, we're kind of putting the camera back together because, as I said, I'm not going to be repairing this. I just wanted to go through with a scope. It's actually on the SR block. It's one of these filters in here. We have no sync. The reason it's not playing back a tape is because one of these guide posts has fallen out of the mechanism. That's why the playback is not working. That has to be put back in to the mechanism. Um, that's why when I tried to play a tape, it wouldn't play. Uh, the reason why we don't have a picture on the camera is well, we got a bad filter capacitor here in the sink circuit And it's more than likely this bad boy here. I was looking at the levels coming off. I got a scope on here now and uh, Everything's all clipped But I'll show you the I'll show you the value on the scope. Whoops Can't see it there But uh, if we look at the scope I'll scope one side of the capacitor and look at the signal there and the other side of the capacitor here we got virtually nothing I think if I bridge that cap we'll probably get a picture okay I hope you can see that I'm going to bridge this capacitor the one I just scoped I bridge this thing there look at that see that that's bridging that capacitor that I just showed you nice and clear remove the capacitor picture goes bad capacitor I'm bridging is that one right there since I've got room to mount a bigger capacitor that's what I'm gonna do we'll get this thing fixed but I gotta get a power supply for this recording camera because my battery is shot so we're gonna do that first and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change that capacitor and fix this camera then we'll put this guide post back so in. So remove the board again and this is the capacitor that we're gonna change right here it's called C412 it's 220 microfarads it's rated at 4 volts I'm going to uh, put a little bit bigger one in than that I think I can probably stand one of these up on the board no problem uh, first thing is to get this old one out 
And there are some techniques to take these capacitors out uh, that work better than others. The one I've always found is the best is just to cut them. Cut and pull the pins. So, because I don't want to damage the circuit board, I don't want to put any heat on it, you know, so I'm just going to take the, uh, my, my uh, side cutters and I'm just going to kind of cut the top off this capacitor like that. Once I cut the top off of it, I can then remove the individual pins. So I'm just going to cut it. Actually, you can just pull that off there. Oh, you can see, look at this. You can see this thing's been leaking. Where did I drop it? I guess I just dropped the uh, the base of it there. But it was all, I don't know if you saw it on camera or not, but maybe you can even see it on the pins here. It, it's, been, it's been leaking. It's been leaking right here. The base is all, all wet. Anyway, now that we've got the, the top of the cap off, we can work at taking the pins out. So I'm just going to cut the remainder of the and remove it. Now you look at the circuit board there, you can probably see the remnants of the electrovetic. You see the brown stuff? That uh, was leaking onto the board. You can see it on the bottom of this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there or not, but on the bottom of the the base. Now we can go in with the soldering iron and we can kind of clean this up. It'll probably smoke when I heat this up because there's going to be electrolytic that is going to vaporize. There we go. Now we've removed the cap. This is the easiest way to try and remove these things if you're replacing them, especially if you got to do a lot of them. We're going to just retin the um, traces, and I'm going to pop this other little cap in and just solder it down to the surface, and then we'll reattach the uh, the camera board to the main the main board, and we'll test it. So just reflow some solder. The negative is to my right. You can tell because uh, on these capacitors, the negative is in indicated by uh, a black. Oops, can't see it with my hand in a way, I'm sure. The negative side is indicated by a black mark, and the front side, the positive side, if you look on the silk screen, it's the uh, corners are square on the negative side, and they're at a 45 degree angle to point to the positive. So, this is the positive side here. So, we have this new. It's actually not even a new capacitor. It's one I've taken off of something else, so I don't even know if this cap's any good. I haven't tested it yet, so I guess before I go much further, I should um, just grab my ESR meter and just quickly test uh, this capacitor. Everything's all tangled up here, which is usually what happens when you're working on stuff. Meters and stuff get tangled up and in the way. Grab the ESR meter, zero it out, and 0.3, and uh, yeah, 0.3, and this is how many volts? 10 volts, anything better than 0.6, anything lower than 0.6 is good, this is 0.3, so this capacitor is fine, so we just get the soldering iron once again. And we'll just uh, solder this capacitor down. Make sure that I'm on camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Positive lead to the left side here. Negative lead to the right. So we're just going to heat it up. And tack it down. Make sure it's down good and tight. Now we'll just bend this cap over out of the way so that it, the case should fit together. And we can now take the unit and we'll just reattach our camera board to the main board. There's four connectors that need to be reattached here. There's the power connector, which we'll do last. But there's these three here that connect the 
camera board to the main board. You just plug them in. These ones just you press them together and they just clip together. There's number two. And there's number three. And now we can put the power connector onto the DC to DC converter down here. So our power is plugged back in. We have a picture. There you go. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. It's not going to focus now because the the buttons that control the autofocus and stuff are on the side of the camera which is not plugged in yet. Once we connect that all the autofocus functions and stuff should work which we're going to do next. Now I remember I said there was a, a problem, one of the um, the guide posts had come out so we're just going to open the mechanism up so that we can put this missing guide post back in. It goes right in, uh, where is it? It's right in here. Point it out. You can see the hole that it's fallen out of right down there. I guess you can't see it from that angle. Now can you see it? There's the little hole right down there. So that's where that little post fell out of. Uh, generally what we want to do is we want to try and put something on there to keep it from falling out again. Uh, crazy glue used to always work well. I'm not going to bother with it in this case just because this camera is not going to be frequently used if ever. It might be used to play back the odd tape. So I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers and just stick it back in. And push it back in because I don't think there will be any issues with this thing uh, falling out for what it's going to get used for, if it even is used for anything. And again, it's my camera, so if it were to fall out again, I would just push it back in place again. So there we go. When I close the, the lid, you'll see the mechanism closes down. So we lower the, the uh, case into place and just press the connector on like that. And then we should be able to just slide the cabinet back together. Kind of like that. Take our battery terminal and it just slides in. There's a groove here and it just slides into that groove. Whoops, we're not quite right there. Got to make sure it's lined up properly. Otherwise, the battery won't make a connection. Like that. So that's how the battery terminal goes in and now we can start to put some of these connectors back together and the screws and stuff in it. I can plug in the viewfinder board and I can plug in the power connectors for the I don't remember which one went where. <laughs> That's unlike, not, that's not usual for Sony to actually have two connectors that will actually plug into each other's plug, but that's what the case is here. There's, there's two of them that are the same. One plugs into the infrared sensor, and the other one plugs into the board here. And I don't remember which one was which. Pretty sure that's the infrared one, and this one is the connector for the AU101 uh, board and then this one goes to this I'm not even worried about that right now anyway because that's just the mic input I want to turn this thing on and uh, see if the autofocus works so we'll snap the battery connector on here and we'll plug our video signal into our monitor and as you can see, autofocus works. As you can see, the autofocus is now working on here, as is the... So here's a tape. This was recorded years and years ago, and it wasn't recorded on this camera, but 
You'll see the tape threads in. The tape gets threaded around the head drum. This is actually that train video that I've got up on YouTube. This is the original tape. And there it is. Complete with all the dropouts. So there we have it. The uh, the tape is playing fine. I've now just restored, with the exception of the viewfinder, and the lens appears to be having a bit of a focus uh, problem. But I have been able to restore the video circuits on my Sony CCD TR81. Handycam. This is one of the better of the uh, small Hi8 cameras that Sony made. Um, this one was really well built and compared to some of the other models that were around, it had a lot of problems. So we're going to put this thing back together so that I can put it back in a box and promptly forget about it, never to be seen again. But um, at least I know that I can rely on this thing for a little while anyway to um, play back some recordings should some of my other um, playback decks fail. That was one of the primary reasons of, of getting this thing working was um, so I can play back stuff because uh, I get tapes coming in to be transferred over to DVD and it's getting harder and harder to find equipment that can play 8mm and high 8 tapes. Uh, they don't make this equipment anymore and a lot of people have scrapped their high 8 and 8 millimeter equipment. They've upgraded to new stuff and they've just gotten rid of their old equipment. And then they realize after they've gotten rid of their old equipment, oh, what, am I, what are we going to do with all those tapes of the kids? It's not like the old days of film where it would last forever and, you know, the tapes don't last forever and either do the uh, Either do the machines to play the tapes. They, 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 they deteriorate just sitting there. So hopefully you've picked something up from this video on how to troubleshoot a handy cam like this. And again, without my old trusty old oscilloscope there, I would have never figured this thing out as quickly as I did. Um, it didn't take me long to find the problem on this. Basically this entire video the camera was running the entire time. I wasn't doing any troubleshooting When the camera wasn't actually recording So the time that took me to troubleshoot this camera and repair it was the time that it took me to Troubleshoot and repair the camera if that makes any sense. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, We'll keep making them because um, our goal is to try and keep this stuff out of the landfill. Every one of these units that we can repair and keep out of the landfill is just one less piece of equipment that's going to be out there contaminating our uh, environment. Um, here in Canada, where I am, we have to recycle electronics. We can't throw them in the trash. and I understand some of the European countries are the same. Everything must be recycled. Unfortunately, not everybody does that. There's still a lot of stuff that ends up going to a landfill. And the chemicals that are in here, the lead, and the chemicals that are in these electronic equipment can certainly cause environmental damage. So anything we can do to reduce that impact, and that includes when we repair equipment and keep it functional, a little while longer is just better for the environment. As you can see, these cameras, these Sony's, 
went together really quite easily. I, I was I've always been a fan of Sony um, video cameras more than anything else. I've used Sony cameras for years. I used them in my video production business for years. I only ventured a couple times away from Sony. I went to a Canon camera once. Um, once. <laughs> Never again. It was not a great camera. And um, I ventured to a Panasonic full-size Super VHS camera once. Again, uh, never again. I came back to Sony and I bought a professional JVC, uh, professional uh, DV camera. Again, that would be about the year uh, 2000, I'm thinking. I'm getting a visitor. My cat's coming to see me. I just heard the door open. So if you hear some meowing, you'll know what it is. Um, yeah, I've been, I say, I've been a big, a big fan of Sony equipment. Uh, they just, they, they basically set the bar in, uh, in, in camcorders and development of formats such as the eight millimeter format. And yes, they did have some dogs, the, the, the F40 and the F30 and those, those ugly yellow sports cameras were atrocious. They were full of, of bad capacitors. Uh, but for the most part, most of the uh, Sony cameras have been very good over the years, and this one is no exception. And it has been out back in service. The screws for the door are here. I do have a couple of extra screws that I have to just kind of look over the camera and see where they go because um, I hate it when there's extra screws left over. One of them goes here. Where's that other one go? And one of them goes up here. Here they go. They go into the lens. That's why they're plastic screws. So there's one of them in there. And the other one goes into the bottom. That's it. Um... Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in again for our next video. Don't know when it'll be. Uh, there'll be another. There'll be another how to fix something soon. I've got lots of um, old electronic stuff around here that uh, needs uh, attention. So um, we'll keep them coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Just before I sign off here, I'll just turn this thing on. Give it one last field check after I've put everything back together. As you can see, that tape seen better days. This thing's fixed. Have a good day.